Magnus the Red, the Sorcerer King. The Horus Heresy is in many ways a Greek tragedy, a collection of tragic figures and ironies that result in irrevocable damages to the Imperium. Horus rebelled against his father for working with elements of chaos despite banning all others from coming into contact with them, and yet in the process, Horus became fully corrupted by chaos himself. Most of the Primarchs have a tragic story to some degree, as the heresy is filled with betrayals, downfalls, and sacrifices. Magnus the Red certainly has one of the more tragic stories, with his exemplifying the adage, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Let's take a brief look at Magnus's origins, his role in the heresy, and the aftermath. Like all of the Emperor's Primarchs, Magnus was scattered across the galaxy at birth, where he landed on the remote colony planet of Prospero. His psychic prowess was evident even at birth, allowing him to be aware of his own natal development, and his landing on Prospero turned out to be quite fortunate, as it was a colony of outcast human psychers. Anywhere else, and his psychic nature would have immediately marked him as an outsider, to be shunned and hunted. Magnus became a ward of the leaders of Prospero, and within only a few years had already surpassed his master in the psychic arts, who himself was likely the greatest psyker on the planet at that time. Before long, partly due to launching a campaign to rid the planet of psychic predator beasts which had plagued the people here, Magnus became the leader of Prospero, unifying its various factions. The capital city was transformed into one of breathtaking beauty, and the civilization here entered an age of peace and prosperity. Magnus also set himself to consolidating and expanding the people's knowledge of the Immaterium and the unseen but immensely powerful energy that powered its currents. To help with this, Magnus built a massive library in the center of the capital brushing aside the warnings of his teacher about the dangers of delving too deeply into the Immaterium. He began to undertake long and far-reaching psychic journeys into the furthest reaches of the warp, and so it was not long before the Emperor of Mankind took notice. The two shared many conversations across the warp, before the Emperor's fleets eventually arrived on the planet, making for a warm and pleasant first encounter. Following this, the two spent decades studying the Immaterium and traveling through it, with the Emperor sharing his knowledge with his son, while also warning him of the dangers present in the warp. The Legion of Space Marines created from Magnus's gene seed were known as the Thousand Sons, as by this point they numbered only around a thousand due to their genetic instabilities. Due to Magnus's gene seed, Many of them were gifted with powerful psychic abilities, which made them quite formidable and useful during the Great Crusade, while also making them a target of distrust from other legions. This was made even worse due to the large number of psychic mutations that the legion experienced, a degeneration that became known as the Flesh Change. This flaw in the gene seed led to a number of them swiftly mutating into mindless monstrosities, and not even the Emperor could fix the flaw. Many of them were put into stasis in the hopes that someday a cure could be found for them, leading to the dwindling numbers of the Legion by the time Magnus took leadership. At this point, the Thousand Sons were left out of the Great Crusade, with some in the Imperium advocating for their euthanization entirely, but Magnus pleaded with the Emperor to give him a chance to find a way to cure the mutation. After several decades of work, Magnus was finally successful in stopping the mutations, although this wasn't a result of his own brilliance. It turns out that Zinch, Chaos God of Change and Sorcery, had been responsible for providing Magnus with this supposed cure, although he had presented it in a subtle way. Magnus was led to believe that he had actually used his psychic prowess to best the entities of the warp and find the cure as part of a plot to make Magnus even more arrogant and confident. That being said, this exchange wasn't without a visible cost, 
as Magnus lost his right eye in the deal, echoing old tales of the Norse god Odin sacrificing his eye to drink from the Well of Knowledge. Regardless, the Thousand Sons were eventually allowed to rejoin the Great Crusade, 100 years after it had started, with Magnus at their forefront. Magnus developed a reputation for being brave yet impetuous, and he began to gather lore about the practice of sorcery from isolated human cultures scattered across the galaxy, despite warnings from the Emperor. One of the things that he discovered was the existence of the Webway, the extra-dimensional network of tunnels capable of facilitating faster-than-light travel. The webway was created tens of millions of years ago by the Old Ones, before being utilized by the Eldari, and sits between real space and the Immaterium. Magnus stumbling upon the webway left him with incomplete and fragmented knowledge about it, but he managed to enter it through sheer psychic force. As the Great Crusade continued, the Imperium began to encounter more and more creatures influenced by the warp leading to more and more suspicion and distrust placed upon Magnus and his legion. Fellow Primarchs Lehman Russ and Mortarion were both quite distrustful of him, in part due to his penchant for deceit during warfare compared to their more straightforward methods. The Thousand Sons also shared their Primarchs' love of knowledge, gathering up as much new information as they could from each world they conquered. The other legions found this obsession to be counterproductive with the goals of the Great Crusade, and also inherently dangerous. During a mission involving both the Thousand Sons and the Space Wolves, Magnus and Lehman Russ nearly came to blows over their differences, avoiding conflict only thanks to Lorgar stepping in. Unfortunately, as time went on, more and more of the Primarchs spoke out against the Thousand Sons and their usage of psychic abilities, eventually bringing it to the Emperor's attention. After much debate, the Emperor called all of the Primarchs together on the planet of Nikea to settle the issue. Although Magnus argued passionately about the benefits and importance of psychers in the Imperium and the contributions they could make, a clear consensus was drawn amongst most of the other participants that psychic power was a potential danger. Ultimately, the Emperor ruled that while no one was to be punished for prior actions involving psychic abilities, usage of them in the future was to be banned outside of specific cases such as astropaths and navigators. Magnus and the Thousand Sons were banned from practicing any of their psychic abilities, although Magnus soon began to find rationalizations and justifications to circumvent this ban. Afterwards, Magnus returned to his homeworld of Prospero, and continued to peer into the warp. Here he saw a vision of events to come, of his brother Horus's revolt against the Emperor and the ensuing war. He witnessed all of the events of the Horus heresy and the roles each Primarch would play, except for his own. Burdened with this terrible knowledge, Magnus first attempted to psychically contact Horus, who was currently gravely wounded and undergoing a chaos ritual instigated by the traitor Erebus. Magnus appeared amidst Horus's visions, attempting to sway his brother from his path, but Horus was already too far gone, and refused to listen. Failing that, Magnus next decided to contact the Emperor himself, but rather than using the legal means of astrotelepathy, as it would be slower, Magnus decided to project himself through the warp to contact his father. While projecting, Magnus came across a section of the webway that led directly to Terra, finding it to be impenetrable. An entity within the warp then whispered to him, however, offering to provide him the power he would need to breach the webway, and Magnus swiftly accepted, breaching the barrier and arriving in the Emperor's throne room. Unfortunately, this would turn out to be the greatest mistake of Magnus's life, the result of his arrogance and impetuosity. Not only had he freely accepted the aid of a chaos entity, soon revealed to be Zinch, 
but he had breached the powerful psychic wards that the Emperor had erected around the Imperial Palace, allowing demons to flood into Terra. Unbeknownst to Magnus, and practically anyone else, the Emperor had been laboring for centuries now to expand the webway and make it usable for humans. He had hoped to discard traditional warp travel entirely and use the webway to assist humanity in detaching from the warp completely, eventually becoming a fully psychic race. Now all of that work was undone, as multiple warp rifts now resided within the webway, and the Emperor was forced to sit upon the Golden Throne in order to close the open portal into the Imperial Palace. Magnus informed the Emperor of what was to come, but enraged as he was at what Magnus had done, the Emperor dismissed him, refusing to believe that his beloved son Horus would betray him. The Emperor instead ordered Lehman Russ, who never had much love for Magnus, to travel to Prospero and bring Magnus back to Terra. Had this occurred, perhaps things could have turned out differently for Magnus, but unfortunately on the way to Prospero, Russ was contacted by Horus, now fully corrupted by Chaos. Horus told his brother to destroy Prospero and the Thousand Sons rather than bringing them to Terra, and Russ, still under the belief that Horus was serving the Emperor, complied. Along with the Space Wolves, Russ also brought a full contingent of custodies, millions of Imperial Army troops, and the elite Sisters of Silence, trained to kill psychers. Meanwhile, Magnus, now realizing the role that Chaos meant for him to play in this civil war, made the decision to sacrifice himself, his legion, and his planet rather than continuing to be a pawn in Zinch's schemes. He therefore did not warn his people or his legion of the ensuing massacre, did not order the manning of the planetary defenses, and even placed a psychic veil over the planet so that his legion wouldn't be able to detect the invasion. The resulting massacre is known as the Burning of Prospero, and began with an orbital bombardment that reduced most of the planet to a burned out rock. The capital city, however, protected by a psychic shield, avoided destruction, necessitating a ground invasion. Civilians and soldiers were slaughtered alike by Lehman Russ's forces, and the city itself was decimated, with its libraries and repositories of knowledge burned to the ground. Magnus did not believe that he had done anything to deserve such a terrible reaction from the Emperor, and ultimately changed his mind about sacrificing himself. He took to the battlefield, breaking the assault with his psychic abilities, and met Lehman Russ in combat. Although Magnus fought bravely, managing to shatter his brother's breastplate and puncture one of his hearts, Russ retaliated by temporarily blinding him, followed by breaking his back over his knee. Thanks to a ritual that he had prepared beforehand, however, Magnus managed to vanish from Prospero just before Russ could land a killing blow, along with all of the Thousand Sons. In the warp, Magnus gave himself over to Zinch fully, who provided him with unrestricted psychic powers and the opportunity for vengeance. His physical form had actually been shattered into a number of independent shards in the process. His second-in-command, Ahriman, was able to recover four of these shards, which allowed Magnus to restore much of his lost power, but the fifth, representing his goodness and humanity, was located on Terra. Magnus decided that he and his legion would join Horus in his conquest of Terra in order to reclaim the shard and take revenge against the Emperor for betraying him. During the Siege of Terra, Magnus wasn't present on the field during the initial stages, with a belief that he was committing his psychic might to weakening the Emperor. Eventually though, Magnus led all 9,000 of his legion in an attack on the Imperial Palace, managing to breach the walls by hurling a super-heavy tank at them. 
The breach was repelled by loyalist forces, but this was just a ruse on Magnus's part to infiltrate the Sanctum Imperialis, psychically cloaked as blood angels. Underground, he met with Malkador the Sigilite, who attempted to turn Magnus back to the loyalist side. When Malkador revealed that the last shard of Magnus was now out of his reach, however, as it had been implanted into a former Thousand Sun, Magnus became enraged and seemingly killed Malkador. Magnus continued on, managing to make it to the throne room where he prepared to kill his father atop the Golden Throne. He was interrupted, however, by the arrival of his brother, Vulcan, and then the Emperor's eyes suddenly opened. Magnus found himself floating through the ether with the Emperor, as he was shown a vision of a future where the Horus Heresy never occurred. The Imperium went on to conquer every last world in the galaxy, and Magnus sat upon the Golden Throne to power the Imperial Webway. Together they would drift through the Immaterium to discover the limits of knowledge, and all would be bliss. The Emperor told Magnus that this future still could come to occur if Magnus rejoined his side and helped destroy the traitors. He would be given command of a new legion, the Grey Knights, but the Thousand Sons would have to be purged due to their mutation issues. This would be too high of a price for Magnus to pay, however, and he lashed out, finding himself in battle with Vulcan. The battle was close, but before Vulcan could win, Magnus gave himself wholly over to Zinch, becoming a demon Primarch. Subsequently, he was expelled from the throne room by the anti-demonic wards in place, but he proceeded to journey into the Imperial Webway. Here he attempted to enact a ritual to sap the Emperor of his remaining strength, but he was again interrupted by Vulcan. Magnus attempted to kill his brother in numerous ways, including beheading him, suffocating him, draining him of blood, and immolating him, but each time Vulcan would regenerate and continue. Eventually, Magnus attempted to explain his actions, but Vulcan only scolded him, calling him a slave to chaos, and prepared to land a final blow. Vulcan hesitated, however allowing Magnus to unleash the spell he had been working on, undoing Vulcan at a genetic level. As Vulcan crumbled apart, he swung his hammer, smashing Magnus' head and banishing him back into the warp. In the aftermath of the Horus Heresy, Magnus and Ahriman attempted to find a way to stop the rapid mutations that were continuing to affect the Thousand Sons after joining with Zeech. Ahriman and his conclave eventually set about casting a tremendous spell that they believed would cleanse the warriors of mutation for the rest of time. The resulting spell was so powerful that even the demons of the warp shied away from it, and the planet of sorcerers where the Thousand Suns resided was engulfed in a blue storm of cataclysmic energy. The spell became known as the Rubric of Ahriman and it did end up cleansing the Legion of Mutations, but at great cost. The small number of the Thousand Sons who possessed psychic powers found them greatly augmented, while the rest of the Legion had their physical bodies vaporized by the storm. Their spirits became trapped in their power armor, becoming known as Rubric Marines, little more than mindless automatons requiring nearby sorcerers to guide them. Magnus put a stop to the spell, horrified and enraged at what had happened to his beloved legion of scholar warriors. Magnus was prepared to kill Ahriman over the event, but was stopped by Zinch, with him realizing that the God of Change had orchestrated all of this. Ahriman and his council were banished instead, and Magnus became even more resigned to seeing the galaxy burn for everything that had happened to him. In the 41st millennium, Magnus spends much of his time in the warp, but has launched several attacks on the Imperium, including multiple attacks against the Space Wolves. More recently, Magnus has the intention of succeeding where his father failed, to elevate humanity to a fully psychic race. 
he intends to create a foothold for Zinch in real space on his former homeworld of Prospero, making it a haven for psychers and mutants. He hopes to build this into a new empire, free from the persecutions of the Imperium. Time will tell how successful this plan will be, but an army of psychers led by one of the greatest of them is not to be taken lightly. On the one hand, Magnus's story is certainly a tragedy, of a man gifted with the burden of knowledge and the never-ending thirst for more, and him trying to do the right thing, but making a fatal mistake. On the other hand, Magnus was warned a great number of times by various other individuals about the dangers of the warp and continuing to meddle with it, and yet he persisted until he learned firsthand. Yes, things would have been different had Magnus sent the warning to the Emperor the safe way, or had he not breached the webway, or had Lehman Russ brought him in without conflict, or a number of other things that happened, but that's the story. Perhaps the Emperor should have been more forthright with Magnus, especially as he intended Magnus to sit on the Golden Throne to power the webway, but as we've seen, the Emperor certainly wasn't infallible. Magnus is punished partly for his psychic power and his thirst for knowledge, despite him being essentially created by the Emperor with those traits at the forefront. As we've seen time and time again, the Horus Heresy is a tragedy instigated as much by the forces of chaos as it was by the failings of the Emperor. Magnus suffered for it, just like all the other Primarchs, but as the second most powerful living Psyker, We'll see if Magnus can succeed in any way where his father failed.